Let's try to understand the difference between a volatile and an atomic counterpart using an example. Let's say we have a variable of type boolean and we are initializing it with the value true. Let's say we have two threads, thread 1 and thread 2, where in thread 2 we are doing some processing based on some condition. Here we are saying while the flag is true, keep doing this processing. To ensure that this while loop is not an infinite loop, we are changing the value of this flag to false in a different thread. So we expect that thread 2 will start, it will do some processing and after a while when this flag is set to false, it will come out of the while loop and will do the next steps. Unfortunately, as for the Java specification, code will not work. To understand why, let's see how the CPU caches are structured. This is a CPU with two cores, core 1 and core 2, where thread 1 and thread 2 are running respectively. Each of these cores will have their local caches and there is a common shared cache. So initially, since both these threads are using the flag, the value of this flag is loaded in their respective local caches. When thread 1 changes the value to false, the thread 2 is still not able to see that updated value and that is why thread 2 keeps running in an infinite while loop. And since the update is not visible to thread 2, this is called a visibility problem. It is very easy to solve this problem just by adding a keyword of volatile. As soon as we add the word volatile, this update of value for the flag is visible to thread 2 and this condition is broken and will come out of the while loop. And the reason it works this time is because now any updates done by thread 1 is visible to thread 2 when it reads the value. So any changes to the local cache are pushed down to the shared cache and they are refreshed back of other cores where other threads are running. Volatile is generally used to solve the visibility problems. Let's take other example. Here's a very innocent looking code. We have a variable called value. It is initialized to one. It is of type integer. And we have two threads where we are saying value plus plus. So we are expecting the value to be incremented to two here and three here or if thread one runs first maybe two here and three here unfortunately it doesn't work that way even if we change this type of value to a volatile integer it would still not work and the reason is this problem is not a visibility problem it is a synchronization problem so value plus plus is actually value equal to value plus one right so it says that read the value, add one to it, and then write that value, right? So there is a reading as well as a writing operation. So these are two different operations. In the code, it looks like a single step, but internally behind the scenes, these are two separate steps. So let's say thread one is initially reading the value. It reads it as one, even if it's volatile because the current value is one. Because our CPU has multiple cores, or because we can never be sure about the JVM scheduling our threads, it is possible that the instructions of these two threads are interleaved. So the read operation of thread one is followed by the read operation of thread two. And in both the cases, they will both get value one because no one has updated the value yet. So even if you have volatile, it doesn't matter because the value is still one. Let's say now thread adds one to it and writes the value two. At this point, the volatile variable has been set to 2. After this point, if anyone reads the value, it will be 2. But unfortunately, thread 2 has already read the value. And that is why it is possible that the next operation done by thread 2 adds 1 to that read value and it also writes 2. So instead of the values 2 and 3 that we were expecting, we get value 2 and 2. And the only reason for that is we have compound operations. We do not have one atomic operation which is reading the current value and writing the updated value. To solve this problem, we can use the synchronized. So we ensure that only one thread is able to come into this block and do this compound operation. So here, only one thread will be allowed to execute. So only one thread will be able to increment the value of one and once this synchronized block is completed, the value is written and the updated value is 2. After this, when thread 2 goes into the same synchronized block, when it reads the value, now it will get the updated value of 2. 
and that is when it will in increment the value of 2 to 3. The second way to solve the problem is to use an atomic integer. In atomic integer, we have a single method which does this compound operation for us. So instead of saying value plus plus, we say value dot increment. Even though you do not do this in a synchronized block, it will ensure that the read and write both operations in this thread are done atomically. So even though both these operations done by these threads occur at the same time, it is the responsibility of the JVM to ensure that each thread is able to do its compound operation on it atomically. Increment is just one of the compound operations that you can do with atomic integer. You can also say increment and get. So you can within the same statement, you can say increment the value and get me the return me that incremented value. Similarly, you can say decrement and get. You can add a value. You can say add phi to my current integer. And last and perhaps the most important is compare and set. Compare and set says whatever variable I am calling this method on. If the value of that method is this, then replace it with this. If the value is something else, do not do anything. That's it. If you have visibility problem, use volatile. If you have compound operations, which you want to do it atomically, then use atomic variables. And typically volatiles are used for flags, generally for booleans, or if you are setting the values directly without checking the initial or the previous value of the volatiles, they can still be used. Atomic integers and atomic longs are used for maintaining counters, uh, which are updated by multiple threads. And then atomic references are generally used based on your use cases. Uh, one of the use cases I've seen in caching, if we have a cache and it behind the scenes we are building a new cache, then we want to atomically update that cache with the new value. And if you search for this class called atomic reference in JDK, you will find a lot of classes within the JDK also uses atomic reference and it is used for non-blocking algorithms. And the method that I spoke about, compare and set, that is used a lot in these algorithms. So that was it, short and sweet. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any comments, let me know and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.